Welcome to the uh, the weekly show where we talk about some upcoming sneakers. We talk about um, some interesting stories generally in the sneaker realm, but sometimes we like to drift off. We just like to do whatever the hell we want to do. Anyway, um, let's get into today's video because as usual, we've got a lot of dope stuff to talk about, a lot of cool upcoming sneakers uh, and really dope stories that are pretty interesting. You know, some of these are pretty cool today, I gotta say. But the first thing we always do is a little recap. So this weekend, kind of big release was of course let me grab them the uh the yeezy 500 uh in flame just in flame i was about to say in flame orange but no these are just in flame so let me know uh who who grabbed these who managed to grab a pair of these and if you did or if you're just interested in this pair of shoes go check out my review it is up on the channel um, very, very interesting and cool pair of shoes that I have already stated in my review how much I like this. It's a dope colorway. I definitely think it was a little bit more limited than maybe some people expected. Uh, I did put out a story on my Instagram and it did seem like an overwhelmingly large amount of people didn't get these. Let me know if you managed to grab these. Did you? Didn't you? Let me know down in the comment section. But of course, we got to get into the upcoming stuff. So let's do just that. I'm over here on the iPad. And uh, the first story we're going to talk about is uh, Casablanca. So Casablanca are going to be releasing their latest colorway of the New Balance 327. And I got to say, not only am I a huge fan of the 327 model, I'm also a big fan of what Casablanca has been doing. Now, with that being said, this one, it doesn't do it for me. It, it doesn't do it for me like the other ones. Um, now, this is the kind of second, what do they call this, monogram? Uh, yeah, monogram kind of style that they do with this very interesting design. I'm definitely not saying I don't like it, but I would prefer the first 327 or the second 327 that they did uh, rather than the two monogram ones. So this is the latest one. If you like this, uh, shout out to you. I think the 327 model is phenomenal. And when it comes to a release date, we're kind of looking at spring 2021. So I would assume pretty close right around the corner. So if you're after this pair of shoes, you shouldn't have to wait too long. Uh, next story, let's get into this one. So, you know, we spoke about the uh, Air Jordan 1 KO that is releasing. It's kind of in the Chicago colorways. Well, right now we've got an upcoming um, Jordan 1 Storm Blue KO. So this is exactly Exactly the same in terms of the color blocking. However, instead of the red, you're getting blue, which again is awesome. It looks cool. I liked the first one and I like this one. And it's definitely going to be a hard cop, I believe. I don't really know how people are taking these KO versions. But yeah, this blue one is going to be coming apparently in September uh, this year. So here's some actual images. It looks pretty cool. I feel like anything blue and white might just be a little bit harder to get when the Travis Scott Fragment collaboration comes out. Like I can see maybe people jumping on that and drawing similarities to this one. Now, uh, the next one we've got is a pair of Dunks, which I thought looked very interesting. Not only the crazy colorway, but also the actual design or the panels have changed as well. So take a look at this one here. This is called the Dunk Scrap Archeo Brown. Uh, and this is a Nike Dunk Low, but just, just look at it. There's plenty of different changes in the paneling. Um, the actual kind of strap that comes up looks to be detached from the pair of shoes. There looks to be so many, yeah, I guess scrap materials on here where it's just like overlaid onto the general shape. You've got some mesh on the side. You've got some mesh on the toe box. It is a bit chaotic, but at the same time, it kind of looks cool. Um, I'm definitely interested in this. I don't know if it's going to be something I really like, but it is for sure very, very interesting. Uh, the colors on it are actually pretty decent as well. Like they didn't go crazy bright and colorful. They just went kind of, you know, darker colorful, which I think fits in with this shoe pretty nicely. Um, but yeah, in terms of a release date is sometime in 2021. I'm not too sure how far in the pipeline, how they're going to push this out. But man, we're, we're not only getting just brand new colorways of the Dunk, we're getting crazy new looks to the Dunk. And I think that's pretty cool. I like the experiments with it. The next story, we've got a pair of Jordan 4s. And uh, does this kind of remind you of anything? Maybe it doesn't, but at the same time, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of people going for this one 
because it looks like a specific other pair of shoes. Maybe you guys know, maybe you guys don't. I'm talking about the Off-White Jordan 4. Anyway, this is called the Shimmer. It is going to be a woman's release, very similar to the Off-White Jordan 4 that released. Um, so this one is, of course, going to be, I think, pretty popular. Like, the colorways for a girl are going to be... Uh, I feel like they can rock this one really, really well. So it's all over kind of, you know, creamish colors. Um, you've got some beige on there as well, a slightly rosy outsole uh, mixed with some white accents. Maybe it's going to have some kind of shimmer effects, it's just obviously you can't really see that from uh, this render, but this is supposed to be coming, well, I mean, they're saying September the 3rd, 2021. I would just kind of use that as a tentative release date for kind of fall 2021. Um, but yeah, the Shimmer Jordan 4, I thought this was very interesting just because of uh, how close it looks, or at least the color scheme looks a little bit similar to uh, the off-white one. And again, we've seen we've seen uh, Jordan brand do that over and over again, where there'll be like a super hyped up one. For example, the Travis Scott Jordan one and then we'll get a, uh, a mocha Jordan one which is like you know what everybody compares that to so they're very clued up over there at Jordan brand they know what they're doing they know what they are doing uh, anyway we've got another dunk on the line and this one of course is the UNC the University blue which is now going to be dropping on June the 24th I feel like we were supposed to get it this month and maybe it got pushed back uh, either way this is going to be an extremely hyped up pair of dunk lows just just like the other one that we had, which was pretty much identical to this. I don't even know what that one was called, UNC. What was that one called? UNLV? Either way, we're getting the UNC or the University Blue one, which is going to be just as popular, maybe even more popular. But yeah, this one is supposed to be coming on June the 24th. Something insane, something crazy, which I just thought I had to bring it over here because again, we talk about whatever the hell we want. Uh, there's this guy called Imran Potato on Instagram. And many of you may not know him. I really actually don't know what he does. Uh, I kind of found him on Instagram when he was doing doing uh, foam runner customs. He like hydro dips them or something and there was these crazy weird patterns on these foam runners that he was putting out and I believe selling. Well now he's got uh, this, well this picture is a pair of shoes that looks like giant dirty feet. It's, um, that's, that's what it is. So this is his latest creation. I believe, you know, he's like some kind of creative. His page is very interesting. His style is very interesting. Uh, I do apologize if I'm supposed to know what this guy does, but I can't, it's not really that apparent on his uh, Instagram at least, and that's the only way I know him. Maybe he has a website, maybe he owns a store, I don't know, but yeah, this is something that maybe he's selling as well, just like the custom foam runners. So it says potato on the bottom, obviously for Imran Potato, and uh, it, it's a literal shoe that looks like feet, and it's bizarre, and it looks, it looks terrible. <laughs> But if you wanted this, I don't know whether you can actually buy it or not. You're going to get so many like looks wearing this. I don't know. It's interesting. I thought I'd chuck it in here. There's no real specific details about that. He literally posted it with the caption, new shoes. And of course, that gained uh, a, lo a lot of traction and, and obviously caught my attention as well. But anyway, we've got to get into some more tangible, actual releases. Uh, and this one is Ambush. So, so we've had two colorways of the Ambush Dunk High, uh, and that was the kind of few or the pink one and then of course the black and white one which was very very popular well now we're probably gonna get one of the most popular ones and that is this blue and white Nike Dunk High and this one is actually earmarked for May 18th so I believe we saw this one and a red and white one but for some reason maybe they scrapped the red and white one or we just haven't heard anything about it but this one is actually literally right around the corner and I only just saw this story and I was like whoa okay well that's kind of left field we only just uh, heard about this now but yeah this is obviously going to be a very popular release as well Supreme released in the week so this is uh, just a little did you guys go for this one I do believe that we spoke about this last week the uh, Air Max 96 with the transparent stripes all over it and of course Supreme dropped these on their website. I would expect a Nike sneakers release sometime, maybe next week or something. I don't know, maybe this weekend. I, I'm, I'm not too sure, but I would expect. They'll probably maybe keep the camo one or maybe keep the silver one and then drop two. Uh, I'm not too sure how they're going to go about this, but I can. First of all, I want to start talking about Supreme from a standpoint of I'm not 
I'm not a supreme guy. I really am not a supreme guy. I don't own any supreme except for, uh, let me see, the only supreme thing I own is the only supreme thing I own and it came with, I believe, what did I order? I can't even remember now. It's like a t-shirt for one of my friends or something who wanted Supreme and uh, I got this sticker. So that's like the only Supreme thing I own and um, that's about it. So I'm really not the Supreme guy. Um, but but uh, there is a box logo t-shirt that I did want to update you guys on because I know a lot of you are going to be excited about this one. Hell, I'm going to be going for this one um, and that is this box logo right here. The Last Supper, that is what it is called. The Last Supper box logo t-shirt and it has gained a huge amount of hype. So this was kind of, I think, sold in store because Supreme just opened a store in Milan and that's where they, they sold this one. Um, but now there's rumors of an online release and this could be happening on Monday. Just look out for Monday at the normal 11 o'clock time. That of course is US and uh, EU as well. So we'll, we'll see if it drops. If it doesn't, I'm just, you know, I'm just saying it just in case. This next one has really got nothing uh, about it. I tried to search for this article on Nice Kicks because I wanted like a little bit more detail about it, but I couldn't find it. So this is all we're left with and I still wanted to uh, pull it up. So this was a post from Nice Kicks over on Instagram and this is a 1985 Air Jordan 1 and a Reddit user apparently found the OG Chicago Air Jordan 1s and purchased for $19.99, which uh, of course, is quite the come up because uh, I mean you, you guys know how much these go for thousands so yeah this is like a little receipt I believe on the back and I believe he purchased them for $19.99 otherwise yeah I mean, of course. So you can see the receipt here. It says quantity one Nike Air Jordan size eight four two eight zero. I don't know what that is. Maybe the box code or something. Uh, and then 1999. That's insane. Anyway, Sakai is still doing weird things that I think is just left field and like what's going on. So remember we spoke about the Sakai LDV waffle that was uh, I think a collaboration with, with Undercover. It was the kind of yellow and black one. And, and I was like, bam, a triple collaboration. That seems crazy. When are they releasing this? We've seen these leaked images for time now uh, and we didn't get any updates. Anyway, this is the latest triple collaboration. This is Clot, Sakai, and of course Nike on the LDV waffle. And uh, this one, this one actually looks hella clean. I really like this one. So it kind of has a similar color scheme to the Air Max ones that just released. It even has the transparent upper like the Air Max ones. Maybe not as extreme. This is a triple collaboration. There is no release date just like the undercover ones, but we've got very detailed images. So I would expect them to all drop together as maybe a pack or something. I don't know what's going on with this. It just seems bizarre that, you know, Sakai would bring back the LDV waffle and then just chuck someone else uh, or get another company involved in the creation. It's cool. I'm definitely down for this one for sure. Uh, this clot one I think is clean as hell, but yeah, again, no release date sometime in 2021 people are saying so I would just keep your ears out and of course I'll keep updating you over here. The next story we've got another Yeezy update. So this one's pretty crazy. You remember the Yeezy 500 blush? I think it was the first Yeezy 500 to release. Well, guess what? Yeezy is doing what Yeezy does best and they're going to be restocking it. Awesome, 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 awesome. Anybody who is after this pair of shoes and is looking at StockX and they're like, damn, 600 bucks, 700 bucks? No, thank you. Well, you may have a chance to grab this pair of shoes this year. I'm not actually too sure about the release date. They're saying fall 2021, but you know what else is in fall 2021? It is Yeezy Day. So I expect this to be part of Yeezy Day. Again, it's not confirmed, but I mean, geez, we know we're having a Yeezy Day. We know we're having a bunch of sneakers restock. So it really is not surprising that this one's going to be added to the list. I mean, pretty much just think about a lot of older Yeezys and just be prepared for a lot of them to restock. So if you're someone who's been holding on to this pair, RIP, uh, and, and all of us get another shot at grabbing this awesome colorway of the Yeezy 500. But yeah, thought I'd add this one in there. Again, we're looking at probably August, which again is Yeezy day just to let you guys know. Uh, but that about is it for this Yeezy story. Now, uh, remember we talked about USPS and their 
you know, kind of back and forth with Nike. Nike just putting out the USPS shoe, uh, or they didn't actually release it, but they, they created the USPS shoes and there was loads of leaked images. And then USPS was like, listen, who the hell said you can do this? Uh, and then Nike's like, okay, okay, listen. Let's, let's have a little chat over here. And the story has developed since then. And it looks like USPS and Nike has come to terms and uh, they're actually going to be collaborating on this officially and, and they're going to be releasing this. So in a rather unexpected ending to the above lawsuit, both USPS and Nike have officially agreed to endorse the upcoming Nike Air Force One Experimental USPS, now licensed and legally ready for release. Look for the pair to arrive in the near future. Now listen, as soon as I saw this story, I was like, damn, is this all planned? Like, okay, we're getting into the sticks again a little bit here. We're getting into conspiracy theory territory, but I was like, now this whole lawsuit thing and all of the blogs and me have spoke about it, uh, it's brought in more hype to this experimental thing, this experimental Air Force One. Maybe they knew USPS was gonna, you know, say, what the hell are you doing? Uh, we haven't endorsed this pair of shoes. Uh, we want some money from this or whatever. And maybe they just put it out there and they were like, yeah, we're gonna get some publicity from this. It just seems a little bit we weird that Nike would put a shoe out without, uh, you know, speaking to this company first, USPS, the company, uh, and, and then suddenly having a little chat with them and, oh, it's all good. It, it just seems a little bit strange here. Now, again, I could be wrong about this whole thing and way off, but uh, anyway, it's going to be released and I think it's cool, but it's definitely not a shoe I'm going to be going for. Uh, I've already tested and tried out the uh, the experimental Air Force One, and to be honest, I really liked the first one. But don't be surprised if this shoe gains a lot more hype now and it sells out because people are speaking about it. But yeah, anyway, they're they're working together and it's all happy, and this is going to be coming very very soon. This next story, I need to drink some water before I get into this one because this is a pretty big topic. Right, so this next one may be a little bit controversial, and it's something I wanted to give my take on it because I think this is pretty interesting and uh, it, it might just be it might just be something that isn't what it seems to be. But anyway, we're talking about the Nike Fly Ease Go. Remember these shoes? They kind of popped up and Nike was super excited about them and there was a lot of press. Uh, basically the shoes that you can slip on or you can put on without using your hands. And it was specifically created for people with disabilities who would actually use something like this as a tool and it would make life a lot easier for that person to put their shoes on and off. And it's a uh, you know, a lot of cool engineering in the shoe and uh, Nike was very proud of it. And a lot of people thought it was a really cool idea, including myself. Now, in this article from Complex, they're talking about how disabled people are questioning this pair of shoes because if, of its limited nature or it's very hard to get nature and the fact that it is actually reselling and it costs, I believe I saw prices at $700. There's a few different ways that you can look at this. Uh, maybe you can look at it as, you know, putting Nike as the bad person here and you can be like, Nike, what the hell are you doing? Making this limited so that resellers profit off of this rather than the people who actually need this and the people who you claim to say that this is intended for. This is, this is stupid and what is going on? And you can make Nike out to be the really bad person or on the flip, you can be like, well, maybe Nike just did not know that this was gonna be a hyped up shoe and maybe they're dealing with a different climate. Maybe they made a decent amount of stock and they just really didn't know that these were gonna take off as much as they did. I don't know, but there definitely is a conversation that is that could be had. Whether Nike is truly doing some weird stuff and they are making these shoes limited, which um, drives up the resale price and they're basically using the same model that they do for like Jordan 1s and hyped up sneakers for this pair of shoes, which was not intended to be resold, or at least you would imagine so. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a strange one. So it would make sense from a business standpoint that you would make these readily available. 
Like, do you really want this to be a hyped up thing? I don't know. There probably is a lot more moving parts uh, and it's very hard to navigate this because there's no actual statement from Nike. It's just something I feel like people are so frustrated with Nike at this point. There's so much built up uh, anger around the fact that all shoes are reselling. I know that people are also going to want to blame resellers as well uh, because, you know, they're buying these shoes and they're profiting off of the fact that a person who really needs it cannot get this. And uh, that is also one way to look at it, but at the same time, I feel like resellers are going to exist no matter what. Like if there is a market, these people are going to find a way to make money. That is what they do. That is why they do it. So I believe if you're looking for a solution to this, like going off to resellers is not necessarily gonna get you anywhere because they're making money and they're just like, okay, whatever. They've done this over and over with different shoes. Kobe's is another controversial topic as well. So I believe that resellers are going to exist in this space. And you know what the solution is to resellers? It's just making that market not exist. So Nike is in control at the end of the day. If they make it limited, well, that gives the opportunity to the resellers to hike up the price. And if they make it readily available, well, resellers are not gonna touch it. Yeah, it'd be super interested to know your guys' thoughts on this. Like, where do you see this? Whose fault is it? Is it Nike? Is it the resellers? Let me know down in the comment section. I think it'd be a cool conversation to have. But listen, even though it's a little bit of a bleaker topic, we're, we're not gonna end on this, okay? We got one more story and we're gonna get into that because this one's actually a pretty cool one. This one's actually really, really cool. So this is on someone who couldn't get the bad bunnies, uh, specifically the pink one. So they made it themselves. And uh, I actually looked at this and I was like, damn, that actually looks really, really good. So take a look at these. And obviously, if you don't know, the Bad Bunny sneaker, that, that the Forum Low, there was two different colorways. There was the brown one and then there was the pink one that recently released. And they are going for astronomical amounts of money on the resale market. So it, when someone can do a custom on a regular pair of Forum Lows, I'm like, damn. And I've always got mad respect for customizers, uh, people who changed the look of sneakers, like dyeing stuff and bleaching shoes. I really, really like watching people who do that. I think it's super, super interesting. But this person basically took a plain pair of forum lows and then used a range of different kind of uh, paints and dyes, some acrylic leather paint and stuff like that, and then just went to town on it. And uh, there's a whole description on how this person did it um, and then it came out looking like this and I think it actually looks pretty cool so obviously it doesn't have the same materials and a lot of the same aspects but man if you're someone who likes to customize your own pair of shoes and this is something that you think looks good I think it looks good I think it looks dope I feel like the forum low is a dope silhouette in general you can pick that up for a hundred bucks and the materials are insane I know that the bad bunny has a whole nother level to its materials and intricacy uh, let me know what you think is this something you would do and where do you stand on like customizing shoes is that something you enjoy something I really enjoy uh, and I'd even like to do some stuff over here on the channel bleaching shoes and stuff like that let me know if you'd guys like to see that in the future but yeah this is just some awesome work I think it looks cool especially on foot you can hardly tell the difference <laughs> but yeah that's where we're gonna end off for today I think this is a really cool story and uh, this person just saved themselves 500 bucks at least that pretty much wraps it up for today. Thank you guys so much for coming through, hanging out. We covered a different range of topics today, so I'd be interested to know what you thought of today's episode. I appreciate you guys so much for coming through, hanging out for yet again another video. Thank you for liking, commenting, and of course subscribing. I'll catch you guys in the next one, but until then.